In today's video, I use a powerful trick to create a seascape image just like this. quite like this shot here because we've got these lovely foreground rocks the waves are splashing in over them and we kind of mirror the shape of the bigger rocks in the background where we've got the lighthouse so I quite like this and I'm imagining this as being quite a narrow wide almost panoramic image 16.9 maybe even 2 to 1 but I want to use a slow shutter speed I want to turn all this water all ghostly and ethereal as it cascades over the rocks. So I've got a ND filter on my camera, f22, 3.2 seconds. I came to Yellow Cray Beach quite recently actually and I got some beautiful summer conditions, lovely light and colours in the sunset. No such luck today though. Very gray, very flat. There is nothing in the sky except just a big blanket of gray. So I'm not gonna be looking for the same sorts of shots. So instead, I'm hoping to use slow shutter speeds. And I'm hoping to use some of these rocks in the foreground along the beach in compositions with the lighthouse. I quite like this view because we've got the nice rocks in the foreground, we've got the lighthouse nicely kind of positioned, I think, sort of in this little gap. We've also got a cargo ship in the background, but that's fine, we don't need that. Settings haven't changed, still at f22, still at five seconds. And I'm just going to wait for a bit of a wave. It's coming in a bit that side. tap to focus and take my shot. The tide is, I think, coming in. That's making it slightly tricky for me, but I could maybe try and stand around here, and wedge my tripod in, maybe like this. But crucially, I think rather than going for a landscape shot, I'm going to be better off using these foreground rocks in a vertical composition. I've been trying to refine this composition a bit, but really what it boils down to is trying to get low and wide angle on these rocks here, because we've got some lovely form and shape to them. We've got the waves coming in and sort of crashing through them, which I want to emphasize with that long exposure. And then we've got the rocks of the lighthouse in the background. What we don't have is light of any kind. It's getting quite dark and it's incredibly gray. There's no contrast, nothing is lighting these up. So that means even more, I want to rely on going for a slightly more surreal looking long exposure image. Maybe it will work well as a black and white because again, it's very gray, there's not a lot of color. But right now, I'm at the widest my lens will go, 24 mil. And I'm really am filling the frame as much as possible with these rocks in the foreground because what's the point in including more of this boring empty sky? So I'm at f22, that's giving me a shutter speed of about four seconds. I'm gonna to tap to focus on the rocks in the middle of the frame. But because I'm shooting these at such a wide angle, it's actually making the lighthouse appear incredibly small in the frame. So I'm also gonna take a shot where I zoom in on the lighthouse and probably try and composite those together in Photoshop. So I get the effect of wide angle on the rocks, but we still keep that lighthouse nice and visible. I've done this before. It's not the most honest technique, but I am at least being honest with you now about what I'm doing. I think I've probably got all I can get right now. 
On the back of camera, I'm not really excited about anything that I've taken. So I'm gonna take them into Lightroom now, see if I can make them look any better. So now I've taken the shots and this is probably one of my favorites from the day. It is a little bit gray and flat and lifeless straight out of camera. So I'm gonna show you how I turned it from this into this. Maybe not the most standout award worthy image ever taken, but I do think that it is a lot better than kind of what I was seeing on the day. Now there's a couple of things that you've noticed. One, we've got different color changes, but we've also got a much more zoomed in view on the lighthouse. The original, the lighthouse is really lost in this picture because we've used that wide angle lens. So it's really only a few pixels up here, but in this one, it's much more part of our image. And this has actually been really easy to do because what it involved is just taking the wide angle view and then separately taking a zoomed in view on the lighthouse and then I've composited those together in Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how I've done that. So first of all, I made all my edits to the original file. This was largely just warming it up, doing a little bit of dodging burning on the rocks, changing around the colors just a little bit and bringing in some selective adjustments. In particular, down in this bottom right hand corner because the original, it was actually weirdly bright and I kind of found that it drew the eye a little bit into this bottom right hand corner of the image. So I've just tried to correct some of that and just trying to inject a little bit more life and contrast into the image. Then I copied those edit settings and then I applied them to this one so that we've got the same sort of exposure, the same color balance. When I took the image, although I was zoomed in more to fill the frame more with the lighthouse, I maintained the same settings so that my exposure and colors and everything else was pretty much gonna be the same in both images. So then all we need to do is take them into Photoshop. So start with this one, right click, edit in Photoshop. So that's loaded this one up. Then we go back into Lightroom and we select our other one, which would be this one. Right click, edit in Photoshop. So we'll keep this one as our main background layer because it is the main image that we're using. And then I'm just gonna go over to this one, Control A, copy over into this one and paste. So clearly now we've just got that image slapped right over the top. That is most of the way there, to be honest. Just to help line things up, I'm gonna change my blending mode from normal to difference. Now that's just gonna uh, show very clearly where each image is. As you can see, it gives, it gives this overlay effect. So it's very easy now for me to just sort of move it up and line it into position. If I press uh, com uh, Control or Command T, I can just straighten this part up and we can move it around. And I basically do just want to drag it and then nudge it using the arrow keys until it is essentially lined up. I'm gonna press enter and then we'll change our blending mode back to normal. Uh, and I think it's pretty much exactly where I want it to be. Obviously, we've still got all of this in the frame. That is easily solved by using an layer mask by clicking that. Still, still there, so that's fine. We go over to our gradients and with our gradients colors set to black and white, we can now just drag this, line that gradient exactly up where we want it to be. I can lift this one right up to here and then bring this one just like this pretty much is already looking great. And you can see it's basically because we just got the ocean, a, it's very difficult to see any kind of line between where uh, one image starts and the next one overlaps. The only problem being this bit of rock here. That's fine, we can just go and refine that line that we've created with the gradient tool with our brush tool. So again, set to black and white. Um, oh, it's the wrong color. We need to paint black because we're painting out. Set it for a fairly low flow and we literally just paint that away, bring that rock back in couldn't be more simple. I'll just check around that there's nothing else that we want, but that pretty much is all we need to do. And I think it looks really, really good already. So if we just go back and we turn that off and on, off and on, 
We can see immediately what it's done for our image before it was so lost in the frame because we've gone wide angle. This was taken at 24 millimeters in order to get all of this rock in the foreground. But as a result, it's meant that the lighthouse really kind of just fades into almost nothing. Now we've brought it much more into the frame. It's actually really seems like it is the subject of our image. But after I did a little bit of cleanup in Photoshop, I brought it back into Lightroom, and then I just did a few more little edits. I added a little bit of blue tone into our shadows. I did that using the color grading tool, um, and just helped bring a little bit more of a, of a cinematic feel to our image. Um, if we have a look before and after, before, and after. It's pretty easy edit, but really the big part of this editing is bringing in that extra image of the lighthouse to really fill the frame. And I do think it has absolutely transformed this image. Now I think it is super simple to do this and it is a really, really good tool to combine that wide angle view of your foreground, but still maintaining your actual subject nice and big in your image. And it is very, very easy to do. You just gotta make sure that you take those two shots on location at the same time. You don't change your settings, otherwise it won't look quite right when you line them up. And as I've shown, it is very, very simple just to comp those together in Photoshop. Now, of course, there is an argument that this is not the most truthful way of taking a photo. It was not exactly what the camera saw. This is not one image, it's two combined. Now, my personal take on this is that I took both those images at the same time, at the same location. They are both my images. I'm not compositing in a random shot of a lighthouse. I'm not using AI generative fill. So it does feel like that's a little bit more honest, but even so, I'm being honest with you all now about what I've gone through to take that photo. I showed how I took that shot and I've shown how I've pieced them together. So I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes in saying that this is just one image when it clearly isn't. But of course, this is up to you to draw your own lines and decide what you're happy doing with. This isn't a technique that you'll wanna use if you really want to make sure that you capture absolutely everything in one shot. But hopefully this has been a useful little tip for those of you into your wide angle landscapes. If you have enjoyed this video, then do please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.